Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to look at a film comparison. So we're going to be looking at Freaky Friday. So the two films that I am, the two versions of this I am reviewing, because there keeps being more of them, um, are the original, which came out in 1976 of Freaky Friday, with Barbara Harris and Jodie Foster. And this one's kind of in the middle. So this is the Freaky Friday with Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan. In between this one and this one, there was a 1998 version with uh, Abby Hoffman and I believe the actress was... Let me bring this up. Um, with, yeah, Abby Hoffman and Shelley Long. And apparently there's another one. More recent, uh, Disney Disney Channel did another one, which is apparently a musical with um, Heidi Birkenstaff, who I've never um, recognized and don't know who this person is. And someone, uh, I can't pronounce the daughter's name whatsoever. Um, Kazoe Zirkendorf? Yeah, I can't pronounce that whatsoever. Um, and apparently there's also a 2020 thing with, what on earth, some other weird, strange thing. Okay, so we're going to be staring at, again, the original and this version, because all of this stuff was actually based on a book. So the basic plot of the book, so we have the book Freaky Friday, which is a children's novel, came out in 1972 by Mary Rogers. So the main point of the book is you have a mother and daughter who are fighting and they switch places. So, and the daughter is having to pretty much live her mother's life, deal with her brother, who she doesn't particularly like, who turns out idolizes her, um, kind of live her mother's life and she gets very frustrated and her, basically, her mother in her body disappears. And at some point, Ben disappears. Now, she's also interacting with her uh, her neighbor, who's her crush, who's by the name of... She calls Boris, turns out his name is Morris, because he has nasal congestion around Annabelle. Possibly means he likes her as well. She is 13 years old in this. So she's pretty much... It goes through the entire course, from what I was able to read by the summary, that... Um, Basically, she learns to appreciate her mother's life and the daughter and the mother in the daughter's body, who apparently did this, pretty much gave, gives her daughter a makeover, gets her, her daughter has braces and have, has those removed and does all of that. And essentially, mother kind of did this to help her child out and then they switch that's, to an extent, the concept of the original film. So again, this came out uh, shortly after the book. So it, um, having not read the book, it sticks decently. The braces is the uh, braces take effect. Um, so she was wearing braces. Mom does the makeover while she's in the daughter's body. Um, gets her hair done. Gets her in fashionable clothing. Again, the braces, which the daughter had completely forgotten about and wouldn't have gotten removed because she didn't remember the appointment. And, but the whole disappearing thing, you see all of this with the daughter, but you also see her screw up at a um, field hockey game, her deal with some of the bullying at the school that her daughter's actually been experiencing. And then there's the climax, which was put in for the film. So dad, his, I think he's some sort of ad executive, uh, who's opening a marina and his daughter is supposed to do a water skiing thing. And in the meantime, he's, he's basically said his wife, um, basically cater this all of a sudden because somehow he lost the catering and dress in a slinky black dress. And so, and so she's doing this. She's entirely similar to the book. She's gotten to know her little brother while she's in her mom's body, realizes he doesn't, in fact, idolize her. Uh, so that's true. And there's a whole bunch of antics that go on. This is a 1976. It was filmed like 75, 74. Um, Disney. 
it's wholesome. It's Disney. Um, there was there was actually an extra on this specific disc with Joey Foster talking as an adult. She's like, yeah, the Disney lot, the rest of the world didn't exist. Including like the Vietnam War ending and everything. This is wholesome Disney. And it was like the rest of the world didn't exist on the Disney lots. So um, it, it, she, it, it's very, very interesting to watch her talk about this. Also, she never had braces. So the uh, inserts made it difficult for her to talk. So she talks very funny in the film because she's not used to braces and they were kind of clunky and there were inserts and everything. So now to the climax of the film. This is just kind of bizarre the way they do this. So the daughter, father won't listen to the daughter. She's, this is the wife in the daughter's body. It's like, do not put me on water skis. I do not want, know what to do. And the mother, the daughter in the mother's body is driving there. Again, she's 13. She most certainly does not know how to drive. So, um, they finally realize they accept each other. They have each have difficult lives and they switch bodies completely. So what this means is all of a sudden mom in her own body is on water skis in a black dress and the daughter whose name is Annabelle is suddenly you have a 13 year old driving a car. So somehow they switch bodies and they even mention it's like, um, right body, wrong place. So you again have antics of mother on water skis doing various things. She ends up up in the air. Um, daughter ends up on a, uh, car chase with the cops. Again, it's funny because wholesome Disney and this is the seventies and daughter ends up driving with attentively with her neighbor who she has a crush on and her little brother and a bunch of food in this topless uh, VW bug. Ends up in the water. Mother lands. Mother, daughter hug each other. And that's the extent of it. It's funny. It's kooky. Um, it makes very little sense because again, the physical bodies move. In the beginning, they just obviously they switch. Mother is in the kitchen smoking as she does. Um, and daughter's gone to the diner to meet her friends to get some gross junk food breakfast, refusing her mother's food. Um, and they just like, basically they wish is like, if you were just could be me for a day and then they switch. So all of a sudden the mother's in the daughter's body and the daughter's in the mother's body. But the way they switch back, they switch physical bodies back, which makes no sense. But again, antics. So it's funny, it's quirky, it's wholesome, it's old Disney. And you can see the water skiing if you see them up close. It's a stunt double who's actually water skiing. They're doing a green screen when they're when it's the actual actresses who are doing it. Even though they did train Jodie Foster for like three days where she got sunburned and everything on water skis for some pointless reason she didn't quite understand because, again, they were on a set with a green screen when they were actually doing it. So it, again, it's funny, it's quirky. And this is original. It probably sticks decently close to the book just because the book had just come out a couple of years before. So now we're going to move on to this version. So in, in the original version, dad's not dead. That's an important thing. And mom's just a housewife. Again, it's the seventies. So now we're going to move into Freaky Friday. The, this was um, in theaters. Um, I don't know if this was in theaters. It was, it probably was, it was the seventies, it was probably drive-ins. Um, but this was also the other, other one was in, uh, theaters. The ones both after this and between these two was Disney channel, original movie stuff. So this is one interesting thing up the one you have, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan, and it's the early two thousands. So they throw in rock and, roll, rock and roll, which the daughter is in a band rather than field hockey, uh, apparently more relatable. And they're doing a battle of the bands thing. And dad's dead, mom's remarrying the next day. And they explain how this happens. They go out to dinner with the brother. Uh, they have grandpa who acts as uh, comic, comic relief. So this is the mother, Jody Foss, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character's father. Um, they go to this Asian restaurant with the fiance, the mother, the daughter, the brother, and the grandfather. And the basically the mother of the owner 
sees the mother and daughter fighting like crazy and gives them weird little fortune cookies with um, a spell on them. <laughs> so the next morning they wake up in each other's bodies. And they're miserable. It's like, oh dear God. It's like, um, mom is a psychologist. She has her engagement party that night. She's getting married the next day. Um, the daughter has the SATs and it has this battle of the bands. And it's kind of an insane day. Um, in this case, they do the switcheroo where the daughter in the mother's body does a makeover. She gets the hair cut. I think she gets some sort of ear piercing up here somewhere. Um, and it's it's kind of insane. I think the daughter, the mother and the daughter's body cleans up a little bit as well. But they learn how difficult each other's lives are, as is the point of these films. Um, the mother and daughter end up going to this battle of the bands where the daughter pretend in the mother and the daughter's body pretends to play while the daughter in the mother's body. Yes, that's confusing. Basically, Jamie Lee Curtis plays the guitar, even though it's dubbed over. Apparently, she learned how to do this, which is amazing, considering she found out she was doing this part, like, I think, four or five days before they started shooting, because somebody else dropped out rather quickly. So she's very, very quirky in this, and very stereotypical teenager. She's playing up the comedy like crazy in this. So... But that's Jamie Lee Curtis. She's a brilliant actress. Lindsay Holohan does not do a bad job. This was not, when I rewatched this, this was not a, hor this was not a horrible thing to watch. Um, I was not particularly looking forward to it. Um, but similar to I um, reviewing and have rewatched The Parent Trap, which was Lindsay Lohan's first film, which was also very entertaining because I did a review between that and the um, Haley Mills original. So. And no, I'm not doing a bunch of the Haley Mills sequels because Haley Mills made bad decisions in her life and marrying an older man and screwing up her career. Uh, moving on, I got to go there. We are doing another Haley Mills film. I'm going to do that darn cat. But again, let's focus on this one. Back to the Battle of the Bands. They survive. They basically do very well. They get back to the engagement party. Daughter gives this amazing speech about loving her loving her child, loving her family, and being unsure, and basically accepting mom's life, and they switch back. So, and it pretty much ends with mom getting married, daughter being happy, them playing, daughter's band playing at the wedding, and grandma trying to switch grandpa and the little boy. Yes, that's <laughs> the very end, and her daughter preventing it. So, yes, the grandmother of the restaurant who was catering it, um, which happens part of the mishaps, um, is about to basically, his grandfather and the, uh, his grandson are arguing and the grandma tries to give them the fortune cookies and she, uh, jumps on them. This actually tinkens back to the fact that at the end of the original film, um, the son and the father are basically considering it. And apparently there is in fact a, both a book and a film where that happens where the son and father switch places for a day. I don't even know if those are still in print. I never even heard that movie existed. Um, it may be locked away in a Disney vault, or it may be on Disney+. Plus. I don't know. I doubt it. Um, may not have been popular enough. But that is the gist of this film, and the gist of... Let me get right side up. This film. So, both of these are very, very good. Um, they're good family, wholesome films. Um, what I like about this specific one, not the film itself, but it has those, that extra interview with um, Jodie Foster, who talks about kind of a little bit of her career at this point. It, she talks about her, she can't watch the film because she was about thir 13, 14 when this was. And as is common with teenage girls, you're at that stage where you're in between still being a kid and kind of being getting into the adult thing you're not particularly happy with your body because girls are growing at this point and so she wasn't she didn't like the way she looked apparently from what i read she thought she was fat in this film obviously she's not she's perfectly healthy 
But again, she was a 13 year old girl. And so she's like, she's, these are my coming of age films. It was this and another film that I've never heard of. Again, it was 70s Disney. Um, which she also mentions like it's this wholesome 70s Disney with a whole bunch of Kurt Russell in it. Yes, Kurt Russell was Disney. Uh, Once Upon a Time. I'm trying to remember. I've seen some strange films with him in an ape. This is before he grew up and went all crazy and did shooting things. Um, this was in his, when he was still young and doing wholesome Disney. So, but it, that's one of the interesting things along with this specific disc um, is listening to Jodie Foster and talk about her early career at that time. Um, the modern version is good. I mean, it, it's much faster and it's obviously far more up to date, at least for 03 when it came out. I have no idea what Disney Channel is doing now with this weird modern thing. I kind of read the description. It sounds really weird. Um, but, and I don't have Disney Plus, nor do I intend to get it anytime soon. So, and the 1998 version, I remember uh, pretty clearly, but it's disappeared. It's not on Disney Plus, and people wonder if it's still somewhere hidden in the vault, or they lost it. It's possible they lost it. Who the heck knows? Um, it was a 90s Disney movie. Um, but, again, they're both really good films. As Jodie Foster mentions in some of the extras, it's about mothers and daughters. As a mother of a daughter, it kind of appeals to an extent of them, particularly at this age, around 13, this is where the conflict hits when mothers and daughters, because the daughters are at that stage where they want to be grown up, but they're not. They're still children, and the moms are still trying to protect them um, and keep an eye on them, and the daughters are kind of pushing against, they're pushing the boundaries. And it's the conflict of daughters growing up. And it's, I like the dynamic. Both actresses, all four actresses do brilliant jobs playing on this. I think Jodie Foster, I think not Jodie Foster, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis could have done a little bit better had she had more time to prepare and get to know Lindsay Lohan. Um, rather than having a short period of time, I think they might have matched, matched the characters a little bit more. But, and it, it may have been a little bit different, but otherwise, they're both really good family films. They're definitely mother-daughter films. Um, be interesting to see father-son ones, but obviously the 2003 version nicks that in the bud. like, no, we're not gonna, <laughs> at the end, we're not going to do a switcheroo there. So, but again, they're great films. Um, obviously the 1970s one has aged because the mother is a housewife and that's pretty much all she expires to be. And it's more about the looks because it's the 70s. And the modern one is obviously far more up to date. So, and then they put that uh, further thing where they're getting married, which apparently is in the newer version as well. So they keep that. That's not in the book. Um, it's not in the book at all. And neither is the water skiing thing. And apparently, like I said, from what I was able to read on Wikipedia, the mother did this on purpose for some reason to give her daughter a makeover. I don't know. Eh, but who knows? Again, fantastic films, both of them. I can recommend both, but remember with this thing, it's a nostalgia thing. It's the 70s. You're looking at it. If you're talking about educational value, you're looking at old films. You're looking at old Jodie Foster. Um, this is a child star who got it done right. Partially probably because her mother, because she does mention in her videos that when she was around this age, her mother was doing exactly that, where she's trying to protect her and keep her safe while allowing her to grow as well. So, um, and that's that's kind of the concept of the films. So that's it for this review. If you like what you see, be sure to check out the rest of my channel. Um, I've done a couple of these comparisons. I'm doing The Parent Trap, That Darn Cat, and then one that's not really child-friendly, um, and that's Sabrina. That's um, the original had Aubrey Hepburn the um, remake had an actress that I cannot remember the name of, um, but um, I think the male is uh, Harrison Ford. I like the modern one better, but again, that's the more romantic, pushing the teen area kind of thing that um, 
that I'm doing. And then, of course, that, that darn cat is funny. Uh, both of those, the modern ones, didn't really get a lot of praise. In fact, with that darn cat, I literally have to buy them in a two-disc set because otherwise I couldn't get the modern one, which is kind of funny. But again, be sure to check those out. I do a lot of film reviews, um, classic stuff, kid stuff, lots of children's book reviews, um, various different teen series, depending. We do some kids travel stuff, um, family travel stuff, and homeschooling stuff. We are a non-religious homeschooling family. So that's the type of homeschooling stuff. But as of right now, my child is very, very young. So we're not doing homeschooling yet. She's, um, as of the shooting of this video, she is three. So we're not there yet. We're just kind of starting to get into it. But be sure to like and subscribe. And that stuff is coming along with a whole bunch of other book reviews and film reviews and stuff like that. So be sure to check out what I've already got and look forward to more. Thank you.